Hey guys, it's Darren from Decibel Guitars here. Um, you might be wondering why I'm sort of taking this unique perspective on the shop floor right now. Um, it's been a long day, but that's not why I'm down here. Um, I want to do a little demonstration, a little bit of science. Well, pseudoscience, uh, some improvised science. Um, I've been working on a new concept for uh, my neck construction in the last couple of months. Another one of the things I've been developing as I've been sort of moving into more steady production. Um, anyway, I've had this idea for how to construct a neck that's reinforced internally um, and finally figured out a way to do it. And I'm going to show that to you now. So, this is my new neck blank. Um, this is just a prototype, but it is the first of its kind. It's a three-piece neck, and you can see it's got laminates in between. Those laminates are carbon fiber, but you'll see that they're not just flats of carbon fiber. They're actually on an angle. If you've ever looked at the way a steel truss roof is constructed, you'll notice that the um, steel members uh, that form the main rails of the steel truss aren't flat. They're angle iron um, because angles are stiffer and stronger and more resistant to twisting than flat pieces of steel. So with that in mind, I thought, you know, I've been thinking for years that I might want to try that with aluminum with some aluminum L sections. Combining aluminum with wood is sometimes troublesome because aluminum and wood expand and contract at very different rates and that's been tried over the years um, with varying degrees of success. <clears throat> so I thought about carbon fiber and there are some pre-made carbon fiber angles out there um, but I thought I would try it myself uh, using just wet layup techniques and figured out how to do it, how to do it uh, consistently and repeatably. And so I've got now this three-piece neck blank. Um, this is going to become a six-string neck. But uh, I wanted to do some measurements to see how much it deflects. Um, it did come out very stiff. I'm really pleased with how it came out. So what I've done here is I've clamped up my digital calipers to it. I'm going to put it across these 4 by 4s here. The Calipers are set so that you can obviously slide. And the end of that is set right against the floor, and I'm going to zero it. So what I'm going to do is put a known amount of weight on it and measure its deflection to see how much that changes um, with some weight on it. And the weight I'm going to use is me. probably give credit to Ned Steinberger because he is sort of the uh, first person to attempt this. So I'm going to call this the Steinberger test. So there we have it. My full 200 pounds are on the neck. It's flexing and I'm twisting, not the neck. <coughs> Excuse me, still have a bit of a cold. So. I'm going to pop the calipers off. And I don't know if you can read that. The uh, calipers read minus 6.61 millimeters. Or minus 0.26 of an inch. So that's about a quarter of an inch. And that's 200 pounds right in the middle of the neck. And when you consider that the average string tension on a guitar neck is, well, for a six-string neck, between probably 90 and 120 pounds, depending on your tuning and your string gauges. Um, and, you know, if you want a couple of, a couple of millimeters of uh, string action at the 12th fret, that's got, you know, I've obviously got a neck here with the maximum amount of flex under 200 pounds of about six millimeters. So it will move. It's not a perfectly, entirely stiff, perfectly straight neck um, because you do want to have some ability to change your neck relief and, and your action. But what I think this will do is allow me to do um, really strong necks that are consistent, um, that are going to be a little more resistant to uh, warping and twisting and bending uh, in ways that we don't want. 
Um, so that's just uh, a new way I thought of to do some carbon reinforcement in the necks. And uh, there you have it. So overall I would call that a successful test. Um, the wood is still dead straight. If I put it on the tile floor it's pretty perfectly straight. It didn't crack, it didn't creak, it didn't protest in any way. So I'd call that a success.